वेलकम बैक टू कार्डियो एड टूडे वी आर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द फेम थ्री ट्रायल विच वॉज रिसेंटली पब्लिश इन न्यू इंग्लैंड जर्नल ऑफ मेडिसिन इन नवंबर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन इफ यू आर लिसनिंग टू और वॉचिंग दिस चैनल फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम कंसिडर सब्सक्राइबिंग वी डिस्कस द रिसेंट एडवांसिस इन कार्डियोलॉजी कार्डिक इमेजिंग एंड कार्डियोवास्कुलर इंटरवेंशंस ऑल्सो वी टच अपॉन द वेरियस टॉपिक्स ऑफ कार्डियोलॉजी इन आर डिस्कशन इट वॉज एन इंटरनेशनल मल्टी सेंट्रिक नॉन इन्फीरियोरिटी ट्रायल In this trial, approximately 1,500 patients with triple vessel disease were randomized in one is to one fashion to either receive coronary artery bypass grafting or FFR guided PCI using the zetarolimus eluting stent. The primary endpoint was major adverse cardiovascular and cerebrovascular events at one year, and it was a composite of death, myocardial infarction, stroke. and repeat revascularization we already know from the results of large randomized controlled trials that coronary artery bypass grafting or cabg is better than percutaneous interventions or pci in triple vessel disease patients but in these trials second generation drug eluting stents were relatively less commonly used and it mainly comprised of the patients who were treated using bare metal stents or first generation drug eluting stents what we already know about the second generation drug eluting stents that they have better early and late outcome and uh, they have lesser incidence of stent thrombosis lesser incidence of peri procedural or spontaneous myocardial infarction lesser incidence of instant restenosis and lesser chances of death as compared to the earlier generation drug eluting stents what we also know about the ffr guided pci is that that ffr guided pci has got better short term and long term outcomes when it is compared with angiography guided pci or medical management this trial evaluated ffr guided pci with second generation drug eluting stents with cabg in triple vessel disease which patients were included in this trial angiographic triple vessel disease without left main disease was included how was the angiographic triple vessel disease defined so any stenosis more than 50% in major epicardial vessel or major side branch was considered to be significant only those patients in whom stenosis was amenable to pci or cabg were included in this study the patients excluded from this study were patients who had recent st segment elevation mi that is within 5 days or patients who had cardiogenic shock or patients who had left ventricular ejection fraction less than 30% or patients who had ongoing non st segment elevation mi with cardiac enzymes still rising all these patients were excluded stenosis with ffr less than equal to 0.8 was treated with zetarolimus eluting stent which were resolute integrity or resolute onyx patients in the pci group received dual antiplatelet therapy for at least 6 months the mean age of the patients in this study was 65 years more than 80% of the patients included in this study were males more than 90% of the studied population comprised of white patients average bmi in this study was 28 approximately 1/3 of the patients were diabetic one fifth of the patients were current smokers one third of the patients had family history of cad approximately one third of the patients had history of mi less than 10% patients had history of cva or stroke around 20% patients had lvef less than 50% of all the patients included around 39% patients presented with history of acute coronary syndrome and uh, approximately 13% patients had history of previous pci if we talk about individual treatment groups in the ffr pci group the mean number of lesions per patient were 4.3 the mean number of drug eluting stent per patient was 3.7 and median stent length was around 80 mm ffr was measured in 82% of the patients included in the ffr pci arm other patients either had totally occluded vessel or subtotally occluded vessel the mean ffr was 0.7 and 
and 24% of the patients intended for the treatment had FFR more than 0.8. FFR was measured after PCI in approximately 60% lesions and mean value of post-procedural FFR was 0.88. In the CABG group, the mean number of lesions per patients were 4.2 and mean 3.4 distal anosmosis were received per patient. Approximately 97% patients received lima or left internal memory artery graft and 25% patients had multiple arterial grafts. At one year, incidence of primary endpoint was 10.6% in the FFR group and only 6.9% in the CABG group. The FFR guided PCI did not meet the criteria for non-inferiority. CABG was found to have lower incidence of composite of death, MI, stroke and repeat revascularization at one year than FFR guided PCI. However, one thing to note is that FFR guided PCI fared better than CABG in some safety endpoints. The patients in CBG arm had longer hospital stay, had higher incidence of major bleeds, more chances of arrhythmia, most commonly atrial fibrillation, more chances of acute kidney injury and more chances of rehospitalization in 30 days. And the FFR guided PCI group had lesser major bleeds, lesser incidence of atrial fibrillation, lesser incidence of ac acute kidney injury and lesser incidence of repeat 30-day hospitalization. There was something interesting in the subgroup analysis also. In the patients with higher syntax score, CABG was found to be much better than FFR-guided PCI. And in patients with lower syntax score, FFR-guided PCI was found to be much better than CABG in terms of one-year major adverse cardiovascular and cerebrovascular events. What are the important take-home messages from this FAME 3 trial? Important message from this trial is that FFR-guided PCI using current generation drug eluting stent is still not non-inferior to CABG in patients with triple vessel disease. Also, from subgroup analysis, we learn that there is some benefit of PCI in patients with low syntax score between 0 to 22. An important reminder before we close today's discussion, so I'm trying to make the best content possible for you. If you have noticed anything on uh, these videos that you think I can improve in, I'm 100% open to feedback and I would love to hear it from you. In order to give me the feedback, all you have to do is leave your thoughts in the comment section below. You are listening to CardioEd and we'll meet again in another episode.